So uh, welcome to Soil Structure Engineering uh, Problems YouTube channel. So in this uh, second part of this uh, problem of a group of six piles that are discharged and loads on, on a couple of layers of soils, um, I'm going to focus on the material laws or material properties um, of the material for the reinforced concrete we are going to say reinforcing concrete, but in actually will be a linear elastic material for the piles and the cap, and elastic materials as well for the two layers of soils with different elastic uh, properties. Um, so um, this is the geometry uh, we have um, made in the last video. So uh, we can see in more details if we can hide, for example, this layer of soil. So it's uh, basically nine piles, not six piles, as I said. So it's nine piles uh, all together um, with a cap and inserted in a first layer of soil. And we have a second layer of soil at the bottom. So I will close this um, geometry because I don't need it anymore. And, and I will start saying that in order to, to define the material properties um, of a uh, of a problem in ANSYS Workbench, you need to open the engineering data. By defect, the software only have defined uh, a material called uh, reinforced, not reinforced, sorry, uh, a structural steel. So if we open here, we have a structural steel that is actually not a steel because this is not a real material, but it's a linear elastic material, as you can see, is defined as an isotropic linear elastic material. So uh, using the concept of isotropic elasticity. And there are a few more things uh, I specify here, like for example, the yield limits and the yield, the ultimate strength um, of this uh, linear elastic isotropic steel. So we are going to create more materials uh, for our problem, um, a material that we are going to call concrete that is gonna be linear elastic and isotropic as well. And we are going to create as well two different uh, linear elastic isotropic materials for the soils, for the two layers of soil we have in our problem. But before, in order to, to understand a little bit better this problem, we are going to discuss some, some theory about this problem. So the problem of um, the interaction between the group of piles and the, the soil will be a problem that will be uh, basically divided in the structural problem and the soil problem. And both of them, the structure and the soil, um, have to be solved in the context of continuum mechanics or continuum geomechanics in the case of the soil. And basically what we are going to do with the software is to resolve a set of um, partial differential equations that will represent this problem. These partial differential equations include the equilibrium equations the compatibility equations, the equation that define the boundary condition of this problem. Um, uh, when we say boundary condition is are the external load applied to the to the to the problem and the restrictions or or contour condition you define as a, for example, in terms of displacement, um, or in terms of flow of water if you are working in a hydromechanical problem, and the thing we are going to take care of the most is the material properties or the material law or the constitutive law are called as well that basically is the relationship between the stresses and the strain by through a stiffness matrix or a stiffness tensor um, so we are going to see in more detail what is this exactly um, so the model I'm proposing to implement in here is going to be linear, elastic, and isotropic. So basically, let me just open this uh, slide. So basically, what we are going to say, this is our soil and our concrete that will be constitute the group of piles, uh, will have a relationship between the stresses. This is the stress tensor and the strain and the strain, the relationship between the stresses and the strain will be through this stiffness matrix that you can see on the screen. And because the model is linear, elastic, and isotropic, and especially because it's isotropic, 
we are going to need to define only two elastic parameters, the yarn modulus in this case and the pulse form ratio. We can use any other set of elastic parameters. We are going to see some examples when we implement the model in the in ANSYS Workbench. But uh, the important thing to understand in here is that this model is um, limited in terms of uh, being realistic because this is a material that is elastic, so recover the formation once we remove the loads. Uh, it's linear because these two constants are precisely constant, so they are not function of the strain, they are not function of the temperature or something like this, so they are just two values defined in this matrix that represent the stiffness, the stiffness of the material. And uh, it's isotropic, so the properties, the Young modulus and Poisson ratio in this case will be the same in every direction of the three-dimensional space. Um, so in the computational mechanic uh, approach, what we do basically is we uh, have three different uh, uh, steps. So the first one is the pre-process we call, where we define in the first place the geometry, the thing we have defined already in the previous video. We need to define the material properties. We need to define the loads, the restrictions on cordon conditions in displacements in this case is what we are going to do. And the interactions, because this is a problem of interaction between the um, group of piles and the soil. And this will be made by um, um, a methodology that ANSYS Workbench has implemented that is called connections. After defining the pre-process of the problem, what we're going to do is we're going to run the solver of this, um, of this software. Um, for us, if we don't understand exactly what we are defining, um, this process will be a black box. But in order to avoid having a black box and not knowing exactly what is going on, this is why I have explained a little bit about the equation we are solving and the type of model we are going to use to represent or to simulate this problem. So the final step of this uh, process is the post-process. Uh, after having the results in terms of displacement, we can show uh, the results in terms of the formation, stresses, safety factor, energy, whatever the software is able to show you, uh, is able to set or, or to, to configure in the, in the post-process. And there is some room for the user to to, you know, to define as well some sort of post-processing for more uh, complex um, settings in with the software, but this is something that we are going to discuss, discuss in the future. So um, these are the elements then that we need to take into consideration. So remember that the models we're going to use for now will be linear, elastic, and isotropic, and um, that we are solving a set of uh, partial differential equations that are representing our problem. So let's go back to the, to the software then. So in order to define the materials we are going to need for, for this problem, I'm going to create materials from scratch. So I'm going to say that I will create, um, let's say, a reinforced concrete, because usually reinforced concrete is the material that we use for piles. It's not gonna be, again, a real reinforced concrete, but a linear elastic isotropic material. So I will define in the first place, uh, making a double click in here, the density of this material. And because it's a reinforced concrete, we can say that this could be, for example, the sensible value, 2,500 kilonewton per cubic meter. It's gonna be okay. And I will click again in reinforced concrete to define the isotropic elasticity. So when you define isotropic elasticity, because it's isotropic, this material needs as a definition only a couple of elastic parameters. I will use megapascal for the units of this Yarn modulus. And I will add this value of 35,000, which is sensible for a reinforced concrete and a Poisson ratio. Let's say I'm going to choose to work with 0 0.25 for now without any justification, but this again, a sensible value. As I mentioned before, um, you don't necessarily need to define the Yarn modulus and the Poisson ratio as elastic parameters. This software in particular have uh, a set of uh, pairs of, uh, of elastic properties to be defined. For example, the shear modulus and Poisson ratio or the bulk modulus and the Poisson ratio, the shear modulus and the Yarn modulus, bulk modulus and Yarn modulus and bulk modulus and shear modulus. 
any set, any pair of this elastic parameter will default automatically any other associated uh, elastic parameters because um, they are just related by simple formulas. If you remember from your lessons in elasticity, you see that uh, there is a relation between the, these different elastic constants we can use in different contexts. So, for example, this you have in here the expression in terms of Young modulus and Poisson ratio. You can calculate easily the bulk modulus, the shear modulus, the um, this lambda, lam, lambda constant, for example, or any other uh, elastic constant that is defined in elasticity. So um, once we have defined the Young modulus and the Poisson ratio for this uh, uh, reinforced concrete or linear elastic isotropic material, what we should define is a criteria, a criterion for the failure. And in order to keep it extremely simple for now, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to define only, let's say, the tensile uh, yield strength and the compressive uh, yield strength for this material. And let's say we are going to work in megapascals, so I'm going to put something just sensible in here. Let's say that ten tensile will be something like 30 megapascals and in compression will be something like 40. So this is just to define a sort of um, parameters to, uh, to have certain control in terms of failure. So we are going to be able to show some sort of, some sort of um, safety factor in once we, we do our post process. So with this, we have defined uh, this material for the piles. So this will be enough for a first approximation, a very simple model. Yeah, we're going to do more or less the same. Actually, it's exactly the same for the two layers of soil. So I will call the first one soil one. So this soil one will have a certain density. Let's say a sensible value of 1800 kilonewton per cubic meter. And we are going to say that this is um, isotropic elastic as well. So we are going to have a um, certain um, Young modulus. Let's say for this soil, um, we are going to have something like, let's say 100. And the Poisson ratio will be 0 0.2, for example. Or oh, let's keep it 0, 0 0.25 as the previous one, not to introduce many changes. Uh, but all these values of score will come for you from, from your own research, from, for example, from uh, tests you run in the field or tests you run at the lab or from the literature you are reviewing for doing your 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 work or your or your design um, just for the demonstration I'm choosing sensible values for you to, to have an example so again I need to define then some sort of parameters to to allow me to to check the the failure so as a tensile yield strength because it's a soil it should be something small so I will choose to use megapascals as unit and let's say this is will be 0 0.1 and the compressive will be better of course and let's say this is 5 or something like this um, just to keep something relatively sensible so um, um, and that's it basically we have defined the, the, the soil 1 for the first layer I'm going to do something similar to the soil 2 so again defining in the first place the density uh, let's say the second layer because it's deeper has a little bit more density and let's say that the elastic parameters for this second soil will be need to be weaker let's say um, we can choose something like 50 megapascals just for the example and we keep 0 0.25 as a Poisson ratio so um, I'm going to add as well this uh, yield strength and compressive yield strength so tensile and compressive in megapascals and I will use something similar to the previous one let's say 0 0.2 and uh, four that I I think will be 
sensible enough. So in this way, we have defined uh, three uh, different linear elastic um, isotropic materials with different elastic parameters, and they will represent um, the concrete for the reinforced concrete for the group of piles and the two layers of soils we are going to have in this problem. So now um, what we can do to ensure that we don't make this uh, a typical mistake, we can we can delete the structural steel because we are not going to use it. So the software is not going to um, attach this material to the geometries we have because if, if we don't delete it, the software by defect assign a structural steel to every geometry you create in this environment. So this is the second uh, step for the definition of this problem then. Um, I will stop here this, uh, uh, this video and in the next video we are going to discuss um, the definition of the other element or the other element for defining a problem. It's not this one. It's, um, Basically, we need, we have defined now the geometry in the first video, the material properties in the second video. And in the next video, we are going to talk about loads and restrictions. The interaction will be created automatically because we have created nice gaps between the piles and the soils. And we are going to talk about as well in the third video, um, some improvement in the mesh of final editing method that the software will generate automatically as well in the first instance. So this is all for now. Thank you for watching.